The Syrian passport is now very easy to fake. And there is no way of telling um, who is really Syrian crossing the borders. The United States doesn't really have a good relations now with the Syrian government, which is the only country able to tell you know tell you uh, if that passport is real or not. So, um, but the, the the other thing that really frustrates me as a Syrian is now as a Syrian, basically everybody thinks I'm ISIS because of the the Syrian name. It's just an association that people are making now. Even though ISIS is something that we have suffered from, not yes. that we have caused. Absolutely. Now, Mimi, we have about a minute left, and I know another thing that's very important to you was the Russia situation. So, what are your views on that? I think uh, you know th this this so-called war on ISIS is really a, a really a war between the U.S. and Russia, and um, some of the people inside the U.S. State Department are so uh, overzealous and basically insane that they are ready to start a world war and kill us all just so they, th they can take over the entire middle east and eastern europe as well there's no balance of power anymore we're really heading towards a, a dangerous situation absolutely now with the time we have left tell people about your websites your twitters and all that um thank you so much for having me on the show it's always a pleasure to be on uh, my website is uh syrian girl partisan blogspot my youtube is syrian girl partisan my twitter is partisan girl um, thank you so much again, Jakar, for having me. All right, thank you, Mimi. Now, coming up later in our show, we have the special report, the interview of Alex Jones talking to Donald Trump, in case you missed it today, on the Alex Jones Show. They talked about all manner of topics, and now they're already being attacked for all manner of topics they didn't even discuss. I've seen articles out, oh, 9-11 conspiracy theory, Bigfoot, Chupacabra, throwing the whole gamut out there, talking about things that they didn't even say in this interview. They stuck to the facts, they stuck to the real issues, and they talked about things that people really need to hear. Now, regardless of whether you think about Trump, what do you think about him or not, uh, what do you think about his policies, this is a very interesting interview, and it would behoove you to stick around for it right after this break. You guys have the exclusive for, which is a product called Deep Cleanse. And why I'm so excited about it is it's a unique formula, almost like the iodine crystals. We have two unique products that nobody in the world has. One of the most amazing ingredients in the world, and it's called Shilajit. And it's actually known as blood of the mountain or rock sweat because thousands of years ago, as a matter of fact, this ingredient was only given to the elite of the elite. Thousands of years ago, up in the Himalayan mountains and in Tibet. And we wanted to put this in, in stuff for, for a couple of years, but we couldn't get an organic form. Right. I mean, so I, let's explain. I mean, we, this stuff's so good, we couldn't put it out for years. Right. So I had to actually, it's kind of like the iodine crystals, finding a source deep in the earth that we could get the cleanest source available. But in Tibet and in Nepal and in the Himalayan mountains, Thousands of years ago, they found, they watched these monkeys. And during the summer months, the monkeys would go up into the mountains. Now you're being racist against monkeys. And they would pick this black substance from the mountains. And so uh, in Russia, they actually, it, it, it grows in Russia in the mountains and in the Himalayas and only in the summer. And Chilajit is actually the decomposition of seven, up to 7,000 different medicinal herbs. So it decomposes, all these different herbs decompose in the Himalayan mountains and the volcanic soil up there. And what happens in the summertime- So it's almost like an oil up. from- Yes, it's high in fulvic acid, it's high in humic acid. Because they're, they're always claiming down. oil is really from decomposed animals and plants. There is some oil that is based from fossils, but most of it's really abiotic. But so, so this is a true fossil uh, source. I mean, explain it to me. It is. A, it's really the decomposition, like I said, of over seven thousand different medicinal herbs and plants. And it and with the rocks and the pressure deep in the mountains, it freezes and and during the summertime and the pressures build it up. It oozes out. It oozes out. So it literally oozes out of the mountain. It's like rock sap. It's like rock sap. It's black, and it's highly nutritious. Uh, even in the 1980s, when the Olympic athletes in Russia were accused of being on steroids, they found out that they were actually been given shalajit because it, it works as an anabolic as well. 
and it builds muscles. It's a big dose in there. The second big main ingredient in there is a volcanic zeolite concentrate. And this, what this formula is designed to do, the shilajit and the zeolites have a real strong negative charge. All the metals and chemicals and PCBs and VOCs have positive charges. So these go in, they grab it, and then they safely eliminate it through the body so you can become healthy. I mean, the, this is an amazing formula. I wish I actually had it, but because this was an exclusive InfoWars Life product, you're the only one in the world that has this formula now. And, uh, you know, there is going to be a limited supply available when you sell out because you can only harvest this once a year. How do people take it? How is it recommended that this be done? Just a daily, daily dose? Yeah, daily dose. Uh, the instructions are on the label. You know, of course, I, I kind of modify it for each individual. It depends on what your lifestyle is. I mean, the, honestly, the best thing to do is for you to avoid all these chemicals and toxins in your environment and try to identify them and start slowly reducing them. But personally, I, I'm going to probably take it every day, every other day, and I'll probably go with about a dropper full to maybe two dropper fulls. Uh, and I, and I, I don't expose myself to any chemicals. InfoWarsLife.com. Please also support our local AM and FM affiliates, support their local sponsors, or become a sponsor and spread the word. Because these aren't just great products. This is how we fund this independent operation. We're not taxpayer-funded like MSNBC or NPR, and neither is your local station. So support them, folks. This is a war. <laughs>and uh, wait till you hear this. Check that mic and we'll get right back to him. A little bit of color while we wait on that. At first, a woman named Dorothy Vaughn assumed this was a drill, just like all the others at her work. She had had drills there. And at the Island Regional Medical Center, where she's a nurse, the Inland Regional Medical Center, they had drilled. The staff works with clients and patients of clients who are sometimes angry. They have active shooter drills in this facility every month or so. So she, Dorothy Vaughn, thought this was a drill. Quote, drill started, she texted her husband Mark around 11 a.m. She walked to a window nearby and filmed a video as law enforcement sprinted toward the buildings. Oh, that is scary, a voice says calmly in the background. They're all geared up, someone else says, rifles and everything. In the background, somebody laughs. They still didn't know. Then the reality set in. She texted her husband again. A so there you go right there. Still didn't know. Thought it was a drill because there's tons of drills there all the time. What are the odds that where you have active shooter drills, you're going to have uh, one of these events go live? Well, uh, that's funny. Let's just look at this. Here's from, uh, this came out of, this is Free Thought Project, breaking SWAT team drill turns into real mass shooting scenario, San Bernardino, California. But you scroll down, what makes it noteworthy is the Paris Emergency Area Personnel and Ambulance Crews are taking part in a simulated exercise on the very same day as the Paris terrorist attacks. On 9-11, the U.S. North American Aerospace Command NORAD was in the midst of an exercise drill called Vigilant Guardian, which coincidentally simulated planes being hijacked by terrorists. And here's another one. This is up from PrisonPlanet.com. We re reposted an article from Shepard Ambellis. Sandy Hook shooting active shooter drill confirmed by law enforcement raised a suspicion of false flag operation. You got into the bottom here. Here it was. This was, I, I think, 14 miles from the Sandy Hook location of an active shooter drill planning for the needs of children in disasters. So we see this happening over and over again in the Boston bombing. You had the same thing where they were doing a bomb drill that they tweeted out, and then they tried to backtrack that and say it wasn't a drill. So we'll be keeping you up to date on all this and more. This is Rob Dew reporting for InfoWars.com and InfoWars Nightly News. Back to Jakari Jackson.
It didn't take long for the New World Order pawns to rally around their color revolution financier, George Soros. On Monday, Obama's State Department criticized Russia's decision to evict George Soros' Open Society Foundation. State Department spokesman Mark Toner said, Today's designation of the Open Society Foundations and the Open Society Institute Assistance Foundation as so-called undesirable organizations will only further restrict the work of civil society in Russia for the benefit of the Russian people. Toner continued, this action is yet another example of the Russian government's growing crackdown on independent voices and a deliberate step to further isolate the Russian people from the world. In November, Russia put the Open Society Foundations and the Open Society Institute Assistance Foundation on a stop list of undesirable foreign NGOs. Reuters reports, Russia's General Prosecutor's Office said the Soros outfits represent a threat to the foundations of the constitutional system of the Russian Federation and the security of the state. The Soros, quote, pro-democracy, end quote, track record includes underwriting color revolutions and stirring up social unrest in Serbia, Georgia, Egypt, Turkey, Macedonia, and most recently, Ukraine. In addition, Soros's NGOs have played a part in the social unrest in Ferguson, Missouri and Baltimore, Maryland. Poland-based journalist and publicist Konrad Stashno wrote, Every time I see George Soros saying something about democracy and European values, I know that something is going to happen. This is the case in Ukraine, when George argued that democracy is the most important thing, and when he says that European values are the most important, and that is why we must accept millions of refugees every year. How will it end? Probably as usual. Fires, riots, overthrowing governments, and total destabilization in Europe, more or less as it ended up recently in Ukraine. In May 2014, Soros told CNN's Fareed Zakaria he is responsible for establishing a foundation in Ukraine that ultimately contributed to the overthrow of the country's elected leader and the installation of a junta handpicked by the State Department. William F. Jasper of the New American writes, the IRF, founded and funded by Soros, boasts that it has given more than any other donor organization to democratic transformation of Ukraine. Vladimir Putin said in a speech before a meeting of the Russian Security Council in November, we see the tragic consequences of the so-called color revolutions and ordeals survived by the peoples of the states that faced these irresponsible experiments of covert and sometimes even overt interferences into their lives. This is a lesson and warning for us, and we will do everything possible to prevent this from happening in Russia. At the very least, Americans should be outraged by Soros' unabashed fueling of division in their own country, as our hijacked government continues to protect his minions. A Black Lives Matter supporter who threatened to massacre 16 white students as a part of a revenge attack for the shooting of Chicago teen Laquan McDonald has been allowed to return to campus by a federal judge. 21-year-old Jabari Dean had written on social media, This is my only warning. At 10 a.m. on Monday morning, I'm going to the campus of the University of Chicago. I will be armed with an M4 carbine and two Desert Eagles, all fully loaded. I will execute approximately 16 white male students. I then will die killing any number of white policemen that I can in the process. This is not a joke. I am to do my part to rid the world of the white devils. I expect you to do the same, the Post stated. That, in a nutshell, is what you can expect resulting from the dirty deeds of one George Soros. John Bound for Infowars.com. General, what do you think about the FBI saying that there's a terror alert on Monday about a potential Fort Hood situation? The police are shoving people, shoving Alex, shoving the crowd. Here we go, folks. I'm being assaulted. Whether it's the radio show, the news websites, documentary films, or the nightly news, InfoWars is the tip of the spear. Is this another false flag stage attack to take our civil liberties and put more homeland security while sticking their hands down on the pants on the streets? It's up to us to set brush fires in the minds of men and women everywhere. And that's what PrisonPlanet.tv is designed to do. If you watch, the Assad regime is going to be blamed or 
accused of using chemical weapons against the so-called rebels. What we see now is a war against reality. It's a war against the truth. It's more vital than ever that supporters of freedom become members of PrisonPlanet.tv and share their membership with up to 11 friends and family. Visit InfoWarsNews.com today. Become a member, share your membership, and help take the Info War to the next level. Unfortunately, you've grown up 